a sad day for all of our community as we s discuss and work through what these police officers and firefighters experienced last night and the continuing investigation that will go on. I just want to take a moment to commend the actions of our first responders, our police officers, and our paramedics and firefighters. And the comments that you'll hear from both chiefs will echo that, but uh, I think it's important for our community to understand the quality of the responders that they have, and this is what these folks do on a daily basis, and important for us to, under to understand how they value their work. With us today is are two of our trustees. Mr. Mike Enderhees is our board president, and Mr. Jeffrey Ritter, our board vice president. Um, Mr. Greg Insko is a trustee. He's unfortunately unavailable to be here this afternoon, but he is also with us as we stand together as a, as a at township and try to move forward through this tragedy. So I'm going to turn it over to Chief Mark Denny of the Corrine Police Department and his comments. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. First, on behalf of Corrine Township, I want to express our deepest sympathies to the victims and families of last night's uh, tragedy. At 11.21 p.m. last night, our officers were dispatched to the 9900 block of Capstan Drive uh, for shots fired. Upon their arrival, they discovered nine people had been shot inside of a residence. The Corrine Township Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services, along with assistance from other agencies, transported the victims to area hospitals, but sadly one victim was pronounced dead at the scene. That victim is Autumn Garrett. She's a female, 22 years old, from Indiana. Also included in those victims were three children, ages 8, 6, and 2, who were taken to Children's Hospital and have non-life-threatening injuries. The conditions of the other five victims at this time are all believed to be non-life-threatening. Our criminal investigative unit is working hard to follow up on any leads and interview witnesses, and at this time we have no suspect information to, to pass on to you. This will obviously be our entire focus moving forward. We do ask anyone with any information to contact 321-COPS, which is a Corrine Police Department 24-hour number, or Crime Stoppers at 352-3040. I also would like to take a second to thank the surrounding police and fire departments who stepped up last night to offer us assistance not only at the scene, but in handling the other calls of service that come out during the evening, uh, especially Cincinnati Police Department, who continues to be a tremendous partner to us whenever we need their assistance. Uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, this type of response is something that we've been training with with our fire department for a number of years. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Fire Chief Frank Cook. He could talk a little bit about his department's response last night. Thank you. Good afternoon. Just speak briefly on the uh, fire department's role during this uh, incident. Uh, as Chief Denny stated, uh, we've trained uh, collaboratively uh, and we work collaboratively on a, on a daily basis with uh, our police department in uh, addressing situations just like this. Um, in fire department terms, we consider it a mass casualty incident, similar to what Cincinnati dealt with back in March of this year at the uh, Cameo, Cameo nightclub shooting. Uh, it too also was a mass casualty incident. Uh, we train on a regular basis uh, in mass casualty incidents uh, where we uh, put into place our uh, procedures and guidelines in reference to the uh, triage, treatment, and transportation of uh, injured or sick uh, victims. Uh, in last night's incident, uh, our first uh, arriving crews were able to uh, enter the scene, uh, take a look, a rapid look at what, uh, what they had, uh, determine and prioritize uh, who was treated first, who was transported first, uh, request additional resources, uh, and this is all part of the mass casualty training and policies and procedures that uh, that we have within the uh, department. Uh, just from a performance uh, measurement, uh, the first uh, ambulance unit on the scene uh, was able to conduct its uh, initial triage and was able to transport the, uh, the very first most critical patient within five minutes. Uh, subsequent arriving units, uh, because of the work being conducted by on-scene firefighters and paramedics and EMTs, uh, subsequent arriving units were able to transport in about a minute to uh, area facilities. Uh, part of the uh, mass casualty uh, uh, concept is to uh, identify uh, who is going to be the most appropriate receiving hospital. Uh, in this particular case, uh, different from what Cincinnati experienced, so this time we're, you know, we're dealing with uh, young, young children. So uh, the, 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 because of the extent of injuries, the uh, majority of the uh, 
victims were transported to University Hospital downtown and also uh, Children's Hospital. Thank you. All right, we'd like to open up to any questions. We ask you to do it orderly and direct your questions to the person that uh, you would like to entertain. Yes. What have the victims been able to tell you about the shooters, anything that they can add that people might be able to help you with? At this time, we're not going to any, talk about any specifics in the investigation. There's nothing that's, that's suitable to be released right now to the public, but our investigators are getting some information from the witnesses. And they're being cooperative and they're working with you in this case? Yes, they are. How many people were inside the house at the time? Uh, I don't have an exact number for that, I'm sorry. Do you know if they knew these shooters or if they were strangers? Can you tell us that? We don't know that. Unfortunately, in this early on as we are, it's, it's, there's a lot more questions I, I cannot answer than I can. We will follow up with any information we do get in the form of press releases. And if anything's significant, again, we would call another uh, meeting for everyone to attend if we had enough information. Do you know what type of weapons or guns were used in this? Were the kids targeted, or was this like a shotgun that just sprayed the room? It, it, there were handguns involved. Uh, we don't know if anyone was targeted at this time. Um, obviously, with nine people shot. Uh, we'd have to gather how many people were in the room at the time and, and figure that out through our witness statements. But at this time, we do have some information on the weapons. Again, that's not something we're going to release yet. How long did this last? Uh, just a moment, maybe a moment or two. I'm sorry, what did you say? Maybe a minute or two. A minute or two. Do you know how many shooters? Uh, we believe two at this time. Do you have any descriptions? We don't. Are you considering the, um, the unborn baby and 10th victim? We heard uh, one of the women lost their baby. We, we've heard that too from social media and third party. We've not confirmed that. Um, I know Ohio law does allow for charges on uh, death of a, of a fetus, so that's something obviously we'd have to talk with the doctors and the prosecutor about. You don't have a description of the, the shooters. Was it hard because they were covering their face or people not getting to look at the shooters? The um, that's some information I'd rather not release right now. Will you be releasing the identities of the other victims in addition to, I know you released the, the we have those obviously in our, in our report. Uh, we don't have any plans to specifically release that information out of privacy concerns for them. It's not until the, the investigation is complete. Not even initial report? I'm sorry? Not even initial That's what this report? is. A U T U M G A R R E T T. She's a female, 22 years old. I believe she's in Hunt, Huntington, Indiana, I believe, which is southwest of Fort Wayne. Uh, that's, that's more specific information I'm willing to, to release at this time. Can you tell me who we think lost the baby? Was this in the shower the party was for? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know who that is. We don't know who that is or, or where. We don't even know if that's true. We, again, we have not confirmed any of that lost individually at all. That's just, we heard in that third party from the media and from social media. Okay, but nobody you guys have talked to reported missing and losing the baby. Correct. Um, it, can you tell us anything about the relationship of the victims who were there? Um, are they friends, family, or all the above? What I, I believe it's all the above. There were family members uh, in attendance as well as friends. I think it's been uh, put out in media that it was a uh, gender announcement party of some sort, so it was a family gathering with friends as well. But did the, uh, the shooters, did they force their way in? Did they knock on the door? How did they, inside? they entered through the front door. That's, that's what we know at this time. We're not sure if they were allowed in or if they forced entry at this point. There's no indication that they forced entry, but we don't have any specific information. I don't know. You asking the public for help. Is there a time frame for people to be paying attention? Maybe something jogs their memory of a certain time span that you're looking at specifically for that area? We'd certainly not rather not limit it to any time span. If there's any information anyone feels is important, we would like that information. We'll, we'll follow up on it and find out if it's something we can use in the investigation. But we certainly don't want to limit anybody into thinking that something they have for us is, is not important because it is. When you left the scene, do you know which direction they were heading? Uh, we do have an idea where they directed, yes. Do you believe several handguns were used? Yes, yes. How many? Uh, we believe two at this time. Same caliber? Or I don't know. Can you tell us what you think the people at this party were targeted by these folks? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Do you, do you, can you tell us if the people at this party were actually the target of the people who went in there? I, I don't know. I don't know if this was, I mean, there's a, a myriad of circumstances that could show what happened there, but we don't know if they were targeted or if this was um, intended for someone else or they just happened to be there. We don't know that. Is there any reason why uh, residents should be 
worry? Since you don't know no, I, was I would like nothing more in my position to be able to stand up here and tell the community they have absolutely nothing to worry about, but I'm not going to provide statements or, or information that's false just to make people feel better. We don't know who the suspects are or why they did this. Uh, we would encourage people to take the same precautions they always do. Um, call our police department if there's anything suspicious, to take reasonable precautions to keep your house locked and lights on, but um, we have no information that makes us believe there's any uh, specific threat to our community. We don't have any information on that, no. Uh, no kind of vehicle description, anything like that, or did they leave in a vehicle or did they leave on foot? They left on foot. Yeah, we have no vehicle description. I just want to be clear. Would you characterize this as random or that you think there was some prior knowledge or you don't know? We don't know. This is, uh, that would be something that would come out in the investigation when we but locate our suspects. To people inside the house. Some, some of them we have, yes. Have you had a chance to interview a lot of the people or a few of the people? Or how, how far? I believe every, everyone that was medically able to speak to us last night we spoke to that was in the house. Um, that number I don't know. Um, but the detectives, obviously, that was our first priority was to, to get as much information from the victims as we could. So if they were able to speak to us, we spoke to them. Ages on the pediatric patients? Do you think? Yeah, I, I think I, uh, it was eight, six, and two. And those are non life threatening wounds of the children as well. Have they been released, or do you know? I don't know. Shot. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Was that four? Do you know I, I don't know. I don't know how many were in the there house. another adult who was not injured in the house. Is that uh, I don't know that. Not yeah, I don't know if that's the case or not. Okay. And the ones that are injured, those are gunshot wounds? Yes. Yeah, all the wounds are gunshot wounds. But in multiple gunshot wounds on victims or just single each? Or? I don't know, and I don't know if that's something the fire department can discuss or not. Um, obviously, by the time we, our investigators came on scene, the victims had been transported, so we didn't have a good opportunity to, to triage them. Yes. How many? How many officers? Mm -hmm. uh, about eight or nine right now working on investigators. And we have more resources uh, through partnerships we have with the federal government and uh, area departments as well. And, and the assistance from Cincinnati is at the time of seeing investigation type? It is. Uh, they were more than willing to come out at, at the quick phone call. They were within an hour. They were on the scene for us. They've always been a great partner to us for that. Unfortunately, they've got experience in that area. No, that's fine. Do you know whether or not there was a guest or was it uh, I, I would speculate uh, she is from Indiana at some point or some area uh, near North, uh, Fort Wayne, so I would assume that she was probably a visitor, but I don't know that for a fact. And just to be clear, she was dead when your first responders entered. Yes. Correct? Yes, she was. Multiple gunshot wounds? Yes. Where about the there were more than nine people inside the home? There were more than nine people inside the home, yes. I don't know how many were inside the home, though. Was it a single officer or a pair of officers that entered the home first? Do you I believe three of our officers entered the home. Right, right, first. Yes. Do you know what the time was from the first call? I know there were multiple calls, but the first call to first arrival. I believe it was two minutes is what minutes. I was told, yes. Okay. Did, did these shooters go through the house looking for people, or did it all happen in basically one room where they just... We've not seen any indication they went through the house. Uh, that doesn't mean they didn't, but we don't see any evidence that they did. They didn't chase people down. They right. All the victims were in that same room, yes. The living room? Yes, okay. yes. How would you characterize this? Is it a who done it? Is it, do you have a lead? Do you have anything? I, just, I don't want to mischaracterize it. Well, at, at this point, I'd rather not get into much of what our investigators know or not. Um, every, every, every homicide is a who done it until you, you arrest them, unfortunately, and convict them. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'm not willing to speculate on that right now. And you have not made any arrests? No. You don't have any we have no arrest made at this time. Anybody else? What does something like this do to, I mean, a mass shooting like this, nine victims, there's kids, and you can hear the 911 screaming, it sounds like pandemonium, I mean, again, from a third party. When you enter, I mean, yeah, you, you train and all that, but it's different when it's real, yeah? Absolutely, and certainly not to, to diminish the, the suffering of the victims of their families, but my concern is also with my first responders as well. This is, you know, this is something that you carry with you. We're not immune to the things that everyone else is immune to, or, that are affected by as well. I mean, you see small children shot, that's going to impact you. And we have uh, plans to make sure our guys are taken care of as well uh, in the days coming forward. Okay, thank you folks. I want to thank you for being here. I would also say that uh, 
some of the things that you've heard and you've asked about, I've come to find out where... Uh, you've been the watching the uh, press me. conference from Coleraine Township. Primarily, you've been listening to Police Chief uh, of Coleraine Township, Mark Denny. You also... 